I'm continuing my reading here, and what I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine of Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Right now, I am still in the first book of Samuel. This is chapter 24. Right now, David and Saul are in the midst of a cat and mouse game, but Saul had to step out to go fight the Philistines, so here we go. David finds Saul asleep in a cave and spares his life. Saul confesses that David is more righteous than he. David swears that he will not cut off the seed of Saul. And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep cots, uh, to the sheep coats, by the way where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. So, what we have here, Saul is searching David out among the mountains, and there's a place, probably cave, the sheep coats are, these are the sheep folds, these are the, the uh, stalls where they keep the sheep, most likely caves, that would then be walled off, so that you had a gate going into them. Uh, but he goes into the cave for shelter for the night to sleep. David is already in the cave, when it says the side in the sides of the cave. This means David's deep in the cave. He is uh, as far back in the cave as you can get. Probably he saw Saul coming, and they went into the cave and hid. And when Saul came into the cave, they just kept backing up into the cave until they got all as far back as they could. And now that, that's the situation here. So verse 4, And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of, of Saul's robes privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words and, su and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterwards and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord the King! And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. So the men with David, David's got 600 men with him at this time, and they're all hiding in these caves in the mountains. But the few men that are with him in this particular cave say, Hey, Saul's sleeping here. God's delivered him into your hands. Go and kill him. And what David does, he, it says he cut the skirt off his robe. But the skirt, it's a, a hem or border on the robe to signify that Saul is the king. This is a royal uh, signet or a royal uh, embroidery on the, on the robe to signify his, his position as king. David takes this off, but he won't kill him. He refuses to do any harm to Saul because Saul was chosen by God. Saul was anointed by God, and so David will not do anything against him. This shows you the integrity of David. Once he's got the skirt, he backs into the cave again. Saul wakes up the next day, doesn't know what David's done, doesn't realize his robe has been cut up and still doesn't know David is there, and he starts leaving. And David, calling from the cave, uh, calls Saul to turn back. Verse 9, And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou, thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee, and I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, 
See, ye, moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not, know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancients, Wickedness proceedeth from, wicked, from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. Now that's a nice little speech. Uh, see, I could have killed you. I've got your royal signet here off your robe. I got your, your the, 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 the hem of your robe that signifies your king. I was able to get that without you knowing I could have killed you, but I didn't. I'm letting God be the judge. God will determine that. God will avenge me because I am just. I have not done anything against you. Now we get Saul's response, though. Verse 16. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast shewed this day how that thou hast dwelt well with me, thou hast dealt well with me, Forasmuch as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore, the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David sware unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men gat them up unto the hold. So, Saul admits that David is more righteous. And he stops chasing him, at least for now. But he does say, he does want his family to, and his line to continue. And David accepts that. He says, yes, I will, preserve your, I will preserve your line. You will have descendants. And we saw that in the book of Chronicles that talked about the descendants of Saul that were living in Jerusalem at the time of the captivity. So David's word is kept. And we'll see that in more detail in later chapters. Well, in Second Samuel, we'll see how that is done. But we see a definite contrast here between David and Saul. But we also see that Saul, he's not entirely gone. He's, I don't know, from things like this, I get the impression that Saul probably has not fallen as far as being a son of perdition. I can't say that he's not a murderer, because he is. I do think he had a mental imbalance, like I've said before. I think he, I think he did have a mental, mental snap. And in this moment, he's getting some clarity. He's, his mind is clearing up, and he's seeing the truth. But that paranoia and jealousy that over, overtakes him, that evil spirit that is not from the Lord, overtakes him again later. And we see this. But the biggest problem is that Saul never seems to keep his repentance going. He turns back to the Lord for a short period and then turns back to his jealousies and his paranoias. So, I don't know. Again, it, I, I honestly do think he had a mental... I, I, think, the thing, I think the appropriate term would be paranoid schizophrenic. I, I think that's probably fairly accurate to Saul. How much that will mitigate his actions in murdering an entire town, killing all of the, the, destroying the city of Nob and all the priests there, I don't know if it will mitigate it at all because that is a horrific act. But Saul, 
I don't know. I think a lot of people just want to vilify it. They want Saul to be a villain. And they don't want to they don't want to consider all the details that the Bible tells us about Saul. They don't want to consider the possibilities that he was truly mentally disturbed. I do I, I don't have too much hope that Saul will be in the celestial kingdom or probably not even in the terrestrial kingdom, but I do have sympathy for him. I do think that his life was a little more, you know, a little harder than what we're generally willing to accept. Anyways, I'm going to leave that here, and I will pick this up in chapter 25 for my next video.